a brand in marketing term is actually an intangible asset. It's an experience, it's a feeling, it's how other people seeing you. So marketing is actually what you tell people and the brand is how people perceive you. And sometimes actually that there's a misalignment between marketing and branding in the sense that you may try to say all these type of things about yourself, but then people may see you very differently based on the experience that they have with your brand. Hi everyone, welcome to Marketing Insider Podcast. Uh, I'm Daniel, uh, I'm a digital marketer uh, based in uh, Helsinki and uh, I will be the host of the podcast today. And uh, with me today, let me introduce Queen Dao. Uh, Queen is a senior marketing manager at Ivan, an unicorn software based in Finland. And uh, one uh, fun fact about Queen that she shared with me is that she used to be in the digital team uh, relaunching Nokia uh, 3310 uh, back to the global market in 2017. Uh, for the younger audience, if you don't know, the Nokia 3310 is a phone with physical button on it and it's one of the most successful phones in the world and one of the Nokia's most iconic device. So thank you very much, Queen, for spending the time with me today. Thank you, Dania, for having me. And I would like to say that the podcast you are doing is really awesome. I wish that years ago when I started my marketing career, uh, there was this kind of podcast so I can get to, to know more about marketing. So I just want to say that great job doing the podcast and very happy to be here. Yeah, I appreciate your comment. Yeah, so the, the goal of, the, of my podcast is to kind of uh, cover different areas of marketing. Uh, and uh, our main target audience are junior marketers uh, working in Europe mainly. And uh, for the topic of today, we will talk about a very exciting topic, branding and uh, brand marketing. But before we jump into the topic, could you uh, introduce a little bit uh, about yourself and your career journey? What brings you to where you are today and uh, why? Uh, we, why are we talking about brand marketing? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Uh, it's actually a very good time for myself to reflect on my marketing career because it's kind of like the anniversary month of my 10 years working in, in marketing. Oh, really? I working in marketing in, in 2013. So January is kind of like my 10 years mark. It has mm. been an awesome journey. I just in university for some weird reason i just felt like i really like marketing i think it started for me really like commercials so when i was young i was just really enjoying watching commercials on tvs i see them as very short story spoken in about 30 seconds or one minute and it's so exciting and it's so funny so i just watching commercials for fun and I guess that's how I actually ended up being in marketing, just because I love watching commercials in my free time. And then after, you know, having a bachelor and master degree in marketing and 10 years working in marketing, I still wake up every day, very excited to do more marketing. My career has been in many different areas of marketing. So I didn't always know that I like brand marketing. I just thought that I want to do something with marketing. I want to, to tell people about the awesome products that I get to work with. So back in 2013, when I started out in marketing, I was a logistics and marketing coordinator for a GPS tracking company in Finland. It was actually more to do with logistics, shipping things around and sales support. So helping sales to do invoices. And I had a very little bit to do with marketing. It was more like working with the graphic designers to design some leaflet that sales can use when they go to a trade show, for example, or then to book some trade shows so that the salespeople can go to and sell the product. That's why after two and a half years working at that GPS checking company, I felt like I didn't have enough of marketing knowledge and things I can do. So I quit my full-time job, uh, permanent job. At the time, I didn't know what to do. I was just thinking that maybe a marketing agency is where I would learn a lot about marketing because I feel like I was really hungry to learn more about marketing. 
So I quit the full-time job and applied for an internship for six months for a digital marketing agency in Helsinki. That, and luckily, that was a very bold decision. <laughs> that yeah. you decided to quit a full-time job back then. Yeah, bravo yeah. to that. Thanks for, for, for saying that, Daniel. I, I appreciate it. Now, thinking back, it was a smart move, but at the time, I was really scared, of course, because without any job prospect in the near future, it was tough to quit it, but I felt like I needed that kind of push to really get me into the marketing world or the real marketing world, which is an agency. And luckily, after six months of, of working for really little money, the agency was happy with my performance and offered me a permanent position for, for the agency. And I stayed there for another two and a half years. That was actually a very exciting time to work with a marketing agency because I got to work with so many different customers, different brands all over the world. And I got to do things like selling Nokia phones or selling oh, yeah. these cars or selling some cereal to China or selling some pizza in the US. So that was pretty exciting time that I get to do marketing campaigns for very different kind of products and learn so much about the industry. That is actually one thing I would love to advise on the marketers, especially the junior marketers, that if you get the chance to spend a couple of years with a marketing agency, if you like it, stay there. If you don't like it, you can move away like what I did. I still really value that time that I spent at the agency because it taught me how to actually use the time. In the agency, you charge people actually based on hour. So if we will charge my work for the client company would chat that, hey, we want to spend 10 hours with your project. And then there's a price list, how much uh, one hour of my time would be worth. And it taught me how to use my time in the most efficient way because I have to actually write down every half an hour, how do I spend my time? And uh, mm -hmm. when I moved from the agency to the company, it's not the same situation because from the company side, they look at time in a different way. There are many long mm -hmm. meetings and the discussion may last forever. So that's why I really appreciate the what I learned in the agency. And then this uh, transition from an agency to a client side was also a big move in the sense that I felt like I would love to actually grow with a brand, grow with a company and see more the big picture, how they are doing things in the agency side. For Daniel, you also work for an agency. So I guess that you can relate to this, that it's often very short term project for a few months or maybe a year max, and then you have to move on to some other things, which is exciting. But at the same time, you don't get to actually see the growth and the development of the brand. And that's why I moved from an agency to a fintech company, a financial technology company, to launch a new brand and a new product for them. And that is another very wide journey because the time I joined, the company was 10 years old, and they realized that they can't do marketing the same way before. They didn't really do marketing before, but at that time, the competition got so tough that they realized that, okay, first, they need to change the name. And secondly, they need to launch a new product and a new brand to go with the product. So I was very lucky to be right there to be with the team to do all that, launching a new product and rebranding the home company. Um, and later, I would love to share some of the, the branding learning I've learned from that journey of launching a new brand. I was also leading the internal marketing team there in, in the company and helping the CMO to, to select global marketing agency. Uh, sadly, after two years, the company went down. We were spending quite a bit of money in different things. Uh, and now I'm at Ivan, which is a unicorn in software industry. We offer open source managed database in the cloud for companies. And I'm a senior marketing manager at, at Ivan. My journey with Ivan also has changed quite a bit because when I joined the company, we were fairly small-ish company with 100 people. And now we are close to 600 people. I was oh. recruited to, to do 
uh, marketing campaigns to the developers to get them to try out the product and use the product. But then gradually, my role has changed more to the brand marketing side of thing to actually promote the whole platform, not just a single product, and get people to know more about Ivan as, as the brand. And that is when I realized that of all the different things I have been doing in my 10 years career in, in marketing, the branding side really makes me happy and excited. Uh, I would like to think of myself as a creative person. So I find myself being super happy when I'm in the same room with the designers and, and creative thinkers and, and drafting some concept for a new campaign. And I, I also feel strongly about the brand being a long-term development for the company and the brand in the sense that when people think about the company, they have some special feelings about it. So that's why I feel like, okay, broader marketing is indeed what I would like to do because it just brings out happiness in me so it's as simple as that mm, very very interesting story queen thank you for sharing your journey with me and uh, i can see that thanks to all of this experience you will have a lot of uh, valuable insights to share with our audience today especially uh, about branding and i can even say that it seems like uh, branding to you right like everything <laughs> falls into the right place you love uh, branding you see you was a kid and now you can do the thing that you love like every day is in your full-time job so that's a that's a place yeah i'm sure that you will be the, the the right person to share about this topic with uh, our audience today okay so let's uh, let's start with the very high level question first why is branding so important today that is a great question, Daniel. I love how you asked that because I'm a big advocate for Simon Sinek's The Golden Circle concept, in which Simon said that always start with why. Start with why. Yes, indeed. So why is branding important? Um, let's split that into two angles, from the marketer angle and then from the consumer angle. So from the marketer angle, branding is so important because it's a powerful tool to set your company apart from the competition and also to build a loyal customer base, which results in maximizing the revenue for your company. And I would love to share the, the, the result from this research with everybody. Uh, Gartner has been doing this annual survey to hundreds of CMOs all over the world. And in the latest edition of the survey, the name is um, the State of Marketing Batch and Strategy 2022. One of the That's questions the, the CMO answered uh, when it comes to the type of investments they've been making in different areas of marketing. Uh, guess where brand strategy is in the in, in the list? Mm. So I would guess that in the top top three position. It's the top three areas that companies yeah. should invest in. That is an excellent, excellent guess, Daniel. Uh, for 2022, brand strategy standing at the top two position. Hundreds of CMOs are spending their, their, their marketing investment. And it's also a good news that in 2021, so a year before, brand strategy was at the number three. So it's actually jumped one um, ranking <laughs> number, number two. But it's still very high, yeah. and it yeah. shows that branding is something that companies care about and uh, are willing to invest into. Exactly. And then what is even more interesting is that another study by Gartner um, that is done to the CEO and senior business executive, which means that these are the bosses that the CMO did to report to. <laughs> And in this, um, one of the questions in this survey, they asked that, what do the CEO think that their CMO should focus on? And the CEO uh, profiles answer that they think their CMO should focus on customer acquisition, retention, while building and maintaining strong brands. And I think that this is a very powerful statement that we often think that it's only the marketing people who care about brands. But obviously, the probably the as we talk about brand and marketing a lot, the, the CEO is also getting to understand the importance of branding and they know that CMO is tasked with building a strong brand. So that's why I think that I want to send this message out to the marketers that, hey, uh, branding is important and it's a very popular trend now in, in marketing. That's why you should pay attention to brand marketing. 
for the business side, it's good to invest in brand marketing and get the brand known because it makes it also easier for sales and performance marketing as well as other functions to sell your product. Imagine that when your sales reps call to a new customer and pitch your company, if the person already knows about your company and already have a positive feeling about the company, it's very easy for the salesperson to continue the discussion. But then if the salesperson called the customer and he would be like, I don't know your company. I don't care about your company. And then <laughs> a call. Yeah, and it happens yeah. more often than not. So that's why a good brand marketing and brand awareness helps everybody in the company. I love it that you started with some statistics. It's a very good way to start a, a conversation. Uh, personally, I, uh, I think that uh, one thing I just noticed that for junior marketers, quite a few of the junior marketers think that uh, branding is something very, I don't know, very high level, very something that doesn't do anything with their job. Branding is like, it's not something that I do or I should care about. Uh, and especially in the startup scenes in small companies, uh, this mindset, I wouldn't say that is a uh, widespread, but uh, I believe that quite a few marketing people think that uh, branding is more for big companies or corporations for house names like Coca-Cola or Unilever, you know, or Microsoft or Apple. Uh, so uh, startups, uh, we don't have money for branding. So let's just focus on marketing. Let's do marketing. Branding, we can do it later on. Queen, you are working at a growing startup and you pay a lot of attention to branding. And the more you grow, the, the more you see how important branding can make or break your company, right? So uh, I'm very excited to, to hear more about insights about brand marketing. Uh, but uh, uh, first, let's, let's try to differentiate in different terms. Let's start to kind of define it so the audience can understand more what we will talk about today. Uh, what is a brand? And uh, what is brand marketing? Is there any kind of similarity or difference between these kind of terms? Are they interchangeable? Yeah, I, I love definition and I think it's good to, to talk about definition. So we are on the same page. There are many different ways to define things. And, and uh, I also like history, how things come to exist. So the history of the word brand, I'm not sure if Daniel, you know, but it actually comes from the farming time that the farmers oh, yeah. they have cows that they need to sell cows but then different farmers have different quality of cows right some would feed their cows in a better way and keep them in a nicer shape so some farmers may have better cows that, that provide better meat compared to other farmers <laughs> and them um, is actually the minute this them um, is the thing that they put on the cow so that when they sell the cow the consumer that hey this cow comes from from mr a and he tend to have better meat so i'm, I'm gonna buy this cow from mr a so the stand is actually the thing that they want their cow to to know oh, which the cow belongs oh. to which farm oh i never heard about this <laughs> so yeah but the, the origin of the wood brand and how the brand has evolved to be a marketing term is much more complex unfortunately uh, people do think that the brand is that kind of stamp that is the, the logo of the company or the icon of the, of the company or the color that the company is using, whether it's orange or red for Coca-Cola. But it's actually more than that, a brand in marketing term is actually an intangible asset. It's an experience, it's a feeling, it's how other people seeing you. So marketing is actually what you tell people and the brand is how people perceive you. And sometimes actually that there's a misalignment between marketing and branding in the sense that you may try to say all these type of things about yourself, but then people may see you very differently based on the experience that they have with your brand. For example, marketing would go out and say that we have the best product on the planet. And then the customers, when they use a the product, they don't feel that it's the best product. They have a lot of problems. So they would be like, no, it's not my feeling about your brand. I can't trust your brand because the promise and the experience don't match. So brand in marketing is a combination of the name, the design, the symbol, the color, the product features, 
everything the experience that the customer has when they interact with anything that from your brand when a sales rep call the customer that is a touch point about the brand when the customer sees uh, an ad your company put out on linkedin it is a brand experience when they go to an event and they see a booth that your company offers that is the brand when they go to the website the feeling they get from reading the website that is also the brand experience and coming back to what you uh, mentioned before daniel about why startup companies think that branding is something for big corporations with lots of marketing budget to invest in that is a fair observation and i understand why people think that because they think branding is probably some super bowl commercial that costs millions of, million of euro and last for years and they don't have that kind of commitment and investment to invest in long-term uh, expenses but brand actually comes from your website how you show different things what is the experience people would get when they interact with your brand so that's how i would define the brand that is actually the combination of many different things how people get to experience your company and your brand mm. yeah i like it that you uh you might define the definition of brand uh, like you said uh, a lot of people think that brand is the logo good or maybe the, the color or the typography that you use in your logo but actually it's much more than just the logo is like the everything like the whole experience is what uh, people are thinking or feeling about your brand it has a lot of things to do with the emotion. Like, let's say that when you think uh, about a brand, you always have some kind of emotion to toward that brand. Uh, you can even think of a brand as a person with uh, characteristic, unique characteristic. The brand should be must be uh, unique and different. Yeah, exactly, Daniel. For example, let's take Coca Cola is a famous drink and of course the brand and how they define their brand also has changed over the years based on the oh, yeah. of based on the competition and based on, on the trends in in the in the society so coca cola used to be just you know like a refreshing drink that you have on a hot summer day but over the years they have changed their brand and as of now they are owned about happiness and about being together so whenever you see a Coca-Cola commercial, for example, it's not about how refreshing people feel when they drink Coca-Cola, but it's about feeling the happiness of people yeah. having fun together. So as a personality, I would think of Coca-Cola as a happy person that is cheerful all the time. But then mm. the competitor, Pepsi, they don't talk about being happy. It's more about like a lifestyle. And they try to say that, hey, people who drink Pepsis are different from people who drink Coca-Cola. So some people even defy themselves based on the kind of drink they have. And for Pepsi as the brand personality, I would think that it's more like a stylish person because they choose the people like Britney Spears or Beyonce to be in their commercial to portray this kind of image that we are really cool and we, we are very stylish. And Coca-Cola is very much like a everybody's kind of drink. Uh, in that way, uh, Coca-Cola uh, is not it's not about the drink itself, but it's about like the happiness, it's like a very wholesome experience. I could also mention uh, Apple, uh, the top of my brand. What do you think about Apple if, yeah. as a brand? Yeah, Apple is a very uh, typical example when people talk about branding and i do think that they do an excellent job at branding they started out actually with um this campaign um think different because that is the message that they are for the people who challenge the started core who want to do things differently who are not uh following what everybody else is doing and that's how they did the home tv commercial when they launched this brand so how i see the people who use apple now today is that they are the ones who do things differently. Often Apple people are the creative people. So that's why Apple is positioning and selling a lot of their products to the creative people, designers, for example, in my in the companies and in, in the agencies I have been working for, the designers always ask for, for a Mac. I haven't seen any designer who use a PC in my <laughs> ten year working experience. And you are correct. Uh, I believe that uh, with Apple, uh, when we think of, uh, when we think about the brand, is uh, always something like innovation, technology, uh, lifestyle, and you know empowering people to to make life 
simple or more productive or such. So I believe that would be the, the kind of image of the program that Apple aims to. Yeah, and they I have think. been they have yeah, they have been doing an excellent job. When when we think about branding, we always bring Apple as a uh, the best example. Yeah, which is a good case because it's it's one of the brands that worth the most of money in the world along with Coca Cola. Oh, yeah, like. that's fine. Yeah, um, Daniel, you did ask about the next level about brand marketing. So we divide what is a brand, and then you also ask about what is brand marketing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So is there any difference? Yeah, um, they are basically two things. Brand is the thing that we need to to do something about it, and brand marketing is how do we promote this this thing. So brand is the total like, field like, experience, like the community. umbrella. Exactly, and then brand marketing is how do you take this thing and and tell it to the right people. I actually did some test with the new tool, the Chat GPT AI uh, chat. <laughs> So I was asking oh. ChatGPT to define for me what is brand marketing. <laughs> Would you like me wow. to read out loud the definition that ChatGPT gave? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so according to ChatGPT, brand marketing is the process of creating and promoting a brand, including its name, identity, messaging, in order to establish and maintain a unique presence in the market and to differentiate it from the competitors. So it's the first bit of the definition that it's basically to create and to promote a brand so that that the company can differentiate themselves from the other players in the field. And the activities that involved in, in branding, in brand marketing can be anything from advertising, public relations, even packaging of the product, sponsorship events, how the website looks, how people talk to other customers. So that's basically the definition of brand marketing. What I would like to add is that brand marketing is basically a subset of marketing as the principle. And the difference of brand marketing is that it focuses more on, on the brand side because marketing tends to focus on, on the products, on the services, on the offer of the company. But the, the brand marketing focus one level up. It's also about what the company represents, what, it, what are their values, what is their purpose, what do they represent. So in that sense, even though brand marketing is a subset of marketing, it talks about a bigger area than just the products and services of the company. So like you said, uh, brand marketing is a subset of marketing. And uh, I believe that is uh, by higher level than at a, a subset of marketing. Do you want to share more insight about these kind of differences? Yeah, sure. So I think it's maybe good for the audience to, to also differentiate brand marketing versus other more uh, common popular concept that people are looking about, about marketing. Demand generation, for example, is a very uh, popular concept right now. So demand generation is also a subset of, of marketing. What demand generation does is they, they do targeted marketing programs to drive awareness and interest in the company's products or services at scale. I'm actually in the demand gen uh, team within Ivan. And then we're actually doing like a, a brand gen within the demand gen. But basically demand gen is a lot about doing marketing campaigns to promote the products and services. And as we discussed before, brand marketing is on level above that. It's not just about the product and services, but it's also about the company. What is the purpose? What are the values? What do they stand for? Why are, we, why are they even exist? So brand marketing is on level up. And if we talk about, for example, content marketing, which is also, it's more like a strategy, how demand generation want to do marketing. Demand generation can do marketing by doing content marketing, which is focusing on creating and distributing valuable content that is relevant for the target audience. The, the demand gen can do performance marketing, which is doing like the digital marketing campaigns that are driven by results and the payment is based on how users interact with the content. So the pay-per-click or pay-per-view. So in that sense, demand gen or brand marketing, a subset of marketing, and then content marketing or performance marketing, I would see those as more like the strategies, how you can do demand generation. And uh, when you are talking about this, I uh, imagine, I have this imagination in my mind that have you ever heard uh, about the marketing tree? 
So uh, let's imagine that marketing marketing is a tree. Okay, let's start with the root. What do you think would be the the roots of that tree, of that marketing tree? I'm guessing the root of the tree could actually be the company and why they exist. That's correct. That's the why. That's the strategy. That's the mission. The vision. And uh, at a low, a little bit lower level is the branding. So the branding is uh, uh, kind of at the uh, the level as a strategy. So it's not like as high as the whole business strategy. Brand branding is still considered part of the company's strategy. Uh, branding is at the root of the tree. So from that branding, we will go to the branch and the leaves. Let's say that the branches here are like the subset of marketing, like we, like you have just talked about. Could be demand gen or perform market, uh, perform marketing or content marketing, but they are they are just like the branches of the tree. And then of course we have the leaves. Uh, the leaves are something like the specific activities or actions that we are taking. It could be uh, the email that we are sending or the social media post that we are sharing. So that is a leaf. But as you can see, that the trees can only grow. Uh, as long as it has a good root. So, yeah. <laughs> That's an excellent way to, to put it, Daniel. I absolutely love it. You remind me of this um, kind of new concept that, that more and more companies, especially B2B companies, are um, developing, which is called brand gen. So it's basically the, the combination of brand marketing and demand generation because um, B2B companies has seen that they can't just sell the product without selling the brand, without getting people to fall in love with the brand and support the brand. So brand gen basically combines the best of both worlds. Brand marketing is a long-term thing that could take months and years to build. And then demand gen is something more like short-term, one quarter, two quarters. And then brand gen bring everything together, like the tree that we can start from the brand and they can go to many different branches to demand gen, content marketing, performance marketing, to an ad on LinkedIn. Mm, okay, interesting. I have never heard about this term before. Uh, yeah, uh, just a job. Uh, it seems like marketers are very good at coming with terms. <laughs> that can be a little bit like confusing to outsider, but I love the term brand gen. And uh, again, uh, I uh, actually in the past, I have the chance to talk with uh, a guest about demand generation. It is a very interesting topic too. Yeah, so I can see that why the brand and branding is so close to uh, demand generation because the only on is uh, on about the customer's awareness is always the first step to turn a, a stranger into a customer, right? That they have to know about the brand. First, they have to know about the brand and then they have to like the brand. They have to love the brand. And uh, lastly, they have to trust the brand so that they can buy from the brand, right? So when we do the demand generation, we want the brand to be known by more people and get it known and also get it loved. It's always the first step to, to turn uh, anybody to become your customer. So I can definitely see the connection here between the branding and the demand generation. Yeah, I totally agree with you there, Daniel. So let's make uh, brand gen a, a thing for this year. <laughs> okay, and then we also talk about uh, branding for uh, corporations and also branding for uh, small companies. Branding is for, I say that, for every business that wants to grow and get more customer in a more sustainable way. Uh, is there any different between branding marketing for B2C and B2B. I hear this a lot, that uh, branding is only needed for B2C brands, um, business uh, to consumer brands, uh, consumer products that we use every day. Uh, is this true or do you think that B2B also needs to invest more in branding nowadays? Mm. That is a very valid question and I ask myself the same thing because when we talk about branding, even the examples that we choose are very often a B2C company like Apple, for example, they Apple. have their branch, but they're actually a very much B2C company. 
Coca Cola is also a B two C company. Pepsi is also a B two C. So I I think that um, whether you are B two C or B two B, you need to do branding. The case is just that B two C companies are much better at doing branding because they have been doing it for longer, and B two B marketers are actually catching up. Um, I want to also share some other interesting numbers because, as I mentioned in the beginning, that I love commercials. So Super Bowl is my uh, my holiday. There are so many good commercials being showed during the halftime of of Super Bowl, and I would like to tease you a little bit here, Danielle, to make you guess. Uh, so if we talk about last year Super Bowl, there were seventy um, ads from thirty two companies. Would you like to guess how many of these thirty-two companies are B two B? Hmm. Yeah, I could guess. Uh, let's say less uh, about ten percent of them. Like let's say ten three companies. Okay, but that is a, a fairly bold. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I could guess so because usually it's about the B two C brand. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Indeed, um, for last me. year, there was yeah. one company. Oh, okay. So it's even lower. That's <laughs> yes. disappointing. Yeah, uh, indeed, because you know, one out of thirty-two companies that is B two B company did the Super Bowl commercial. Of course, it's super expensive to 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 do Super Bowl commercials, and it's something that B two C companies have more experience. But um, the example from last year is actually. Gong um, is a sales tool that enable companies to learn insight from customer conversations. So Gong, for example, allows the sales team to record the phone calls or the video call when they talk to the customer, so that everybody in the company can go to the conversations and get the insights from from the discussions with the customer. So it's very much a B two B tool for the sales team. It's very targeted, and they did. Uh, actually, at least two Super Bowl commercials, if I remember correctly, they did one in 2022 and another one in 2021. And I guess that the fact that they are going again for Super Bowl commercial shows it that, means that it works well. for them. Yes, right, exactly. So, um, and I really like what the CMO of Gong shared about this strategy, how he managed to convince everybody in the company, especially the CEO, to go for this kind of thing. He pointed out that the biggest thing B2C has been doing differently to B2B for years is that they talk like human beings. And I'm gonna pause here for a little while because that it, it sounds like a very normal thing. Of course we talk like human beings. Why don't we talk like human beings? But if you think about when you do B2B marketing, you often get comment like, oh, you have to sound more formal, more official because you're talking to a company, not a person, and you're talking to a CTO or CEO. So be formal because it is business, it's not casual. And I think that is mm. something wrong because CTO or CEO or CMO, they are still people and they want, want to be connected to as a person with emotion, not just price and features. Mm, that's that's a very interesting point that you brought up. Even they are big company, they are B two B or they are B two B two C. The decision makers are still human. So if you can connect with the decision makers in a very human way, yeah, and you can always win. I, I think that's very much about branding. Is about storytelling, but it's also about emotion, human human emotion. How the brand can connect with this audience. Uh, emotionally yeah you define branding beautifully daniel uh, there's so many things mm -hmm. i want to talk about it and that's why I, I love brand marketing so much because it brings out this kind of emotion that you wouldn't get if you watch a presentation about a product features or benefits um you remind me of what a cmo from ipm was saying in one of the interviews she was saying that um b2b marketing has lost its way because 
everybody is doing the same thing everybody is going to the same channels everybody is sending linkedin messaging it's not about the value it's not about the story that we bring to the customer so we need to change by creating the pull then the push so instead of the sales people trying to get them to talk to us it's like the pull from the brand when when the brand educate and inspire the customers to the right storytelling that's how we can change and disrupt the way b2b marketing is done and that's basically brand marketing uh, okay so let's uh, continue with our discussion so how do you define uh, brand marketing what are the components of brand marketing um yeah i think it's good to talk about the practical stuff that okay now that hopefully the audience have uh, understand how important it is to have a brand and to do brand marketing and how how shall we go about it how do we do brand marketing um i can recap it in like let's say five steps how you can go about a, a market brand marketing plan so the first thing you need to do is to have the brand foundation and this is something that danielle you mentioned earlier in different um examples that the foundation of the brand like the root of the marketing tree is about the why the brand purpose and brand mission purpose, why yes, your uh, company exists except for beyond making money of course we, we are companies so we need to make money but why else do you exist um and how did you get this why it's often good to talk to the founders of the companies because they must have some reasons why they founded this company in the first place so try to get that why and purpose from them and then have, have a copywriter to write a better message out of those stories I can share in the case of my current company, Ivan, for example, uh, why do we exist? Our founders are developers and they were doing some very boring database maintenance and updating task. And they were like, this is so boring and so annoying. Can we hire somebody <laughs> to do it? And they couldn't do it. So they was like, okay, well, it seems like nobody is doing this. So let's, let's, let's do this. So we are taking care of the boring database management task so that the developers can do the more creative stuff of um, doing apps and doing software to actually bring value to the customer and they don't have to care about maintaining some database. So that's why I went came to exist, that we want to make developers' life better by doing some boring tasks for them so that they can focus on doing the creative things that are actually beneficial for their business. So first start with the why, the brand purpose. Why did you exist as the company? And another thing in the foundation is also talk about the vision of the company, meaning that what do you want to achieve in the future? Where do you want to take your company? Where is your company going? And that is something that I guess for marketers, we are very familiar with the brand purpose and, and, and the vision. Another thing that we may not think too much about is actually the brand values. So basically, what do we stand for that will guide our decision making? We may tend to think of values as, you know, the company values that we say internally, but we actually don't care about it. But the, the big and powerful brands, they care really much about their brand values. Uh, my company, Ivan, we also have our own values, which we, we use consistently and are reflected in many things we do. And I can talk more about that a bit later when I share about the example. So brand values is something that you should define as well. That's the, the first step to go about a brand marketing plan to have this kind of foundation with the purpose, why do you exist, with the vision, where do you want to go, and then with the values what kind of things you believe in and that would guide your decision making because sometimes for example let's say you have to do to choose a campaign idea for the next brand campaign which one do you choose and you go back to the values of the brand and then see which campaign reflect those values so that's one of the ways how the brand values can guide the actions when you actually have to do things so that's the, the first step in the brand marketing plan to have this kind of brand foundation. And after you have this foundation, the second step would be to, to set some, some targets, some goals for your brand marketing effort. And these targets should actually support the business target because still in the end of the day, we have the brand, but we still have to make money. So the brand marketing target should align with the business target. For example, is it like you want to get more new customers? What kind of customer do you want to get? Or is it like to get existing customers to use your service more often? Or is it to get existing customer to use more of your, of your, of your services and product? So basically, the brand marketing goals should align with the business target. And that's also how 
uh, marketers uh, can sell the brand marketing campaign to the CFO because they can show the alignment that hey, it's not just one of those fluffy things that that is <laughs> it's actually linked to the business target of the company. So that's the second step to define the marketing, the brand marketing goals. Uh, once you have this kind of destination where you want to go, then you can define how did you get there, which is uh, the step number three to define the brand strategy. And I would recommend the marketers to define like three to four strategy max to, to achieve your goals. And this is where you think about your the, the brand tribe or your target audience. Who do you want to, to, to talk to? who would benefit the most from this kind of services? Uh, how do you position your brand compared to the other companies? Are you like a, more about the services or more about the cheap price or is it about innovation? So all of those things dictate how you're gonna go there to reach your target. For example, the strategy can be like to attract more new user by investing in brand awareness or the strategy can be to nurture your existing community to increase the customer retention. Or then the strategy for the brand can be doing something so different that we can defend ourselves against a newcomer in the market. So there are different strategies, how you can reach your, your goal. And after you have this, this kind of path to go there, then the fourth step is actually talking about the brick to build that path, which is the brand tactics. So it is more like a stage, exactly. So it's more like knowing your audience and how to reach them the best so that you can tell this brand story to them. So this is where we talk about things like, is it advertising campaign? Is it a PR effort? Is it social media campaign? Is it a sponsorship with some partners who align with, with our values? Is it an, an event or do we do a content marketing campaign? So this is where we talk about the nitty gritty of the actual work. So then we have the, the the bond foundation, we have the goals, we have the strategy, we have the tactics. And when we do one of these things, of course, we need the last thing, which is to actually measure our effort to make sure that whatever we are doing actually meet the, the goals that we want to achieve. And if we don't meet the goals, it's totally okay. Just reflect and learn and move on. So those could be the five different steps, easily put five different things, how you can do bond marketing. Beautifully, I'm so into your <laughs> your talk that I forgot uh, what I need to ask you next. But yeah, <laughs> really, really, uh, really uh, valuable uh, to me yeah. as a listener. Uh, to be honest, I haven't got a lot of uh, experience working in brand marketing before, and uh, I'm practical guy who wants to do things. Right now, I feel very excited to move <laughs> more higher and want to do. Um, more things with brand and brand marketing because like you said it dictates everything that we do it's not about like okay we need to run app now or we need to write some more proposals but it's more about the strategy first it's about the purpose the mission the vision the value and all the three things that we dictate what we will do and how we will do it not the other way around so yeah very interesting and yeah, always uh, appreciate this kind of conversation or this kind of approach to the problem that we always start from the high level stuff before we uh, go into the details of what we are going to do. Yeah, exactly, Daniel. I'm, I'm happy that I um, inspire you, you to... You inspire me. I think, yeah. Um, the tactical stuff, for example, um, how I would brief my designers or copywriters when I need them to do to write a blog post or to prepare one image for the blog post, I always start with, with why, that hey, why are we doing this blog post? How does it fit into the strategy? And those, those kind of things first inspire them to do their part so they know that they're not just doing one blog post. The blog post actually fit into a bigger picture and also once they know why they are doing that and the target audience and the key message, it also helps them to choose okay. the tone of voice and then what kind of image do we show here if this is the, the goal and how this one blog post can support the event coming up next week, the webinar coming up next month, the campaign coming up next year because when we have the event, we can always tell people, hey, come back here and read the blog that we wrote last year because it's the same topic about the same theme and it looks and feels the same. It's the same brand feeling. 
So that's how I often brief my, 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 my team that, hey, here's why we are doing this. And then now you go and you do your thing because you are the expert in writing the blog. I'm not. <laughs> if we don't know what to do, then we do it uh, randomly and aimlessly. But uh, once we understand why we are doing this, then we do our job better. And I think this is kind of the common problem, especially uh, when they kind of into their work too much, but they forgot the big picture because they are too busy uh, with the everyday tasks. And yeah, and most of the time they get lost along the way that they forget why they are doing what they are doing. So it's always good one in the why to kind of reflect to themselves or to have a manager to kind of bring them back to what uh, what is the most important thing and the why. Yeah, exactly. And it's a two-way street, right? Because it's the manager's job to tell you the why. Then sometimes the manager is also a human, like we said. <laughs> you can forget about things. So I think it's something that the 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 the, the producer, the, the writer, the copywriter, the designers also is also their own job to also ask the why. That if the mm. if the manager forgot to tell them why we are doing this, they would proactively ask okay can you also tell me why are we doing this and how is this block or this linkedin post fit to our strategy so it's also asking the question is good because it's also guide their work and it avoids the abundant waste of time for example they work on something assuming that it is for this purpose and then they produce something and it actually didn't fit the what the manager was asking for so they have to do the whole thing again so it's also beneficial for the designers copyright to, to also ask the the person who gave them the task that, okay can you tell me why am i doing this how does it fit to the brand strategy yeah you hear queen said uh, uh, don't be afraid to 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 uh, manage back your manager i think there is a uh, one skill i forgot the name of that skill but yeah, it's it not listening up managing yeah, managing the stakeholders. Yeah, and I think it's a, also a good way to show um, your your competence as as a copywriter or designer that you you think about the bigger picture, not just the the task. And for the people who want to go to the next step in their career, for example, I think asking questions, um, like managing upward, are the good skills to have. Yeah, I'm still mm, practicing it myself right. every day that I have to also ask my, my managers to question things, <laughs> not just things for, for granted. Yeah, so we uh, talk a lot about uh, brand branding, brand marketing uh, with a lot of uh, theoreticals and examples. And we also uh, define the key elements of brand marketing. It's so much easier to understand a concept for examples, I know that uh, Queen, you have prepared a couple of examples to bring to our audience today. So are you ready to share? <laughs> yeah, happy to share from my own experience. Um, I would like to start by sharing the, the brand positioning and brand strategy. How did we do that at a company called Marsh? I was working as a marketing operations manager for, for Marsh for more than two years, and I was very lucky to be there to launch a new brand. So the company was named something else. The, the interesting story about the Marsh brand is that um, they are a financial technology company that offer uh, payment to the customers. People may be familiar with Klarna, that they offer payment when you buy online things like clothing, for example. So Klarna was very strong online. And uh, when Marsh entered the market, we also had something that is very good for the offline uh, payment. So think about bigger purchases that when you go fix your car, for example, you had to pay hundreds or sometimes thousands of euros at the car mechanic shop and you may not have that money right now to pay for that. So you would need somebody to help you to pay in smaller installments. So instead of paying thousands of euros at once, you can pay maybe 100 euros every month, for example. So Mars was offering that kind of service and how we are different is that they can offer that both for the e-commerce and the physical stores. And that is something that Mars was the only one at the time to be able to provide that. But still, because we just renamed the company, so for 10 years, people knew us as somebody else. And suddenly, uh -huh. we had to change to Marsh. So we had to first educate people that, okay, Marsh is a valid company. We didn't just appear yesterday. Uh -huh. 
So we had to be this kind of authority that, hey, we are a legit company. And when it comes to finance, you had to be a legit player so that people trust you. So that's the first um, positioning and strategy that we had to tackle, that how do we build this kind of legit player that people can trust? And the second thing is uh, being a fintech financial technology company, we also want to be very different from the traditional financial institutions like banking. So those are the two problems that we had to deal with. And we, we those kind of things that are tackled very nicely in everything we did when we launched this new March brand from the basic things like the brand visual. It was super colorful. We used a very strong colors. The color of the brand was green. And then we have a lot of like warm colors and we are very bold when it comes to colors and, and the visual. Uh, for example, when we did our financial statement, which is something that is only going to the shareholders of the company, but we still want to be very consistent with this bold brand kind of color. Mm -hmm. We have the brand color dinosaur bunny flowers in the financial statement. Oh, I so, have never thought about incorporating branding into the some financial documents. Oh my yeah, yeah. God. Yeah. Exactly, and, and that's why we, we were trying to be different and stick to the brand personality in every single touch point. And people may say that branding is only for big companies, but every company has to do financial statement. And that is one of the ways how you can communicate about the brand. So we have a very colorful financial statement. And luckily, the, the shareholder didn't say anything bad about that. They was very happy <laughs> to be something so colorful and cheerful to go with the boring numbers. Mm. And then when we did um, a front page uh, print ad on Helsinki Sanomat, which is the biggest magazine in, in Finland, we also have the same thing that we have a green background and with the white flowers from small to big to show how people can grow with mash. So again, that we are being very different because when you think about financial companies, you often see some graphs of some arrows going up and some, some numbers, but we didn't do that. We just used... Up. <laughs> so that is one of the, the things that we, we, we want to be different. And then when it comes to how do we establish that we are a legit player, a, a, a legit company that people can trust, we did really big things so that people see that we actually have the, the financial resource behind to do big things. Um, I was very lucky to actually do my first TV commercial with MASH. So that's how we, we go <laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciate this experience because now we do mostly digital marketing. So it's a very rare chance that a marketer get to produce a TV commercial. And it was indeed very, very expensive. But it was a very, a very nice project that we get to transfer the brand positioning and strategy into a 30 second piece of content that was showed on TV and also on, on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if, if Daniel, you know this song from Salt and Pepper. The name is Push It Real Good. Mm, no, I have no idea, but I will search for it after this uh, podcast. Yeah. It, it goes like, push it, you push it real good. It very curious. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a fairly uh, popular song for, for the people in the previous generation. And uh, we, we had the idea that, hey, Push It sounds close enough to mash it. So what if we buy the right to use this famous song in our TV commercial? And that's what we did. We contacted the, the singers of the song, Son and Pepper, to buy the right for the song, Push It Real Good. We also paid for the right to be able to edit the lyrics of the song and to record a new version of the song. So we changed from Push It, Push It Real Good to Mash It, Mash It Real Good. It means that when people pay with Mash, that's why they Mash It. So you're paying for the door by mash it. Mm, yeah, so creative. Yeah, and that's that's how we that's one of the ways we will show the consumers and also the merchants in Finland that we are a legit player because not all companies are actually afford to go on TV commercial. I think in this case it's kind of a rebranding, right? Like because the companies want to kind of rebrand it as um, something new something different and something very innovative. So it's kind of a rebranding project and uh, it's very, very difficult and it can take a lot of money to kind of change the perception of the audience about a brand. Yes, in, indeed. And I think as a marketer, 
Um, it was a nice campaign because, for example, we used dinosaur in our event. We did a lot of uh, event for the consumers at the shopping centers, for example, and we wanted to show that we are different from the from the traditional financial company. So we have a dinosaur. <laughs> kind of like making fun of the the banking institution like a dinosaur it was an accident actually we didn't really plan it but but people when 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 people ask us hey why do you choose dinosaur to be your mascot <laughs> why do you think it is? often say that yeah or maybe because you know banking are like dinosaur and you are new so you're making fun of them we're like you got it yeah. So we just basically because we wanted to be different. That's why we would use a dinosaur. And since the brand was new, so we had a bit of of, of leverage to test new stuff. And after a year, a year doing campaign in Finland, my friends and network started to talk to me. That every time they see a dinosaur on the street or on 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 the internet, they would send it to me, and they they remember the company I'm working for just because of the dinosaur. And I think as a marketer, it's a great sign that what you are sending out to the world is remembered by the people. Uh, so that was the first example about the brand positioning and brand strategy, how we did when we launched a new brand at Marsh. The second example I would like to share is about the, the brand purpose and the brand values and how we do those things at uh, Ivan, the company that I'm working for right now. Before you start, let me say something. I noticed uh, Ivan use a, an, a symbolic animal for his brand and it's a red crab, very cute one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks for saying we also have a brand story behind that. Um, again, mm. it's about being being different from other tech company, so that's one of the reasons why we chose the, the 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 crab to be our icon, and the purpose of the brand, as I mentioned earlier, it is to to make developers' life easier and better. And how do and we fun. do that? Yeah, exactly. And also fun. <laughs> yeah, and we we make uh, developer lives better in many different ways. So the first thing is of course our product that our product itself help the developers so that they can focus on doing the fun thing of developing an application and they don't have to worry about the database behind that we handle the boring, boring stuff. So the product itself is one way how we meet our purpose. On top of that, many things we do in the company is about helping the developers. So we, we were actually awarded with an award for our developers documentation hub because the kind of content we put there is so useful and easy for the developers to use that they wanted us to be a winning winning brand when it comes to documentation. We also do community events and we organize our own event called Uptam last year in 2022 in here in Amsterdam for the developers with no purpose of getting leads. Uh, our customers, the whole event was sponsored by Ivan so that the developers can come together and talk about open source technology and database, which is something that we offer. But that was the purpose just for developers to get together. We also, uh, the brand purpose also influences how we hire people. We have a team within the marketing team uh, to actually do developer relations. What they do is that they would, for example, educate the developers about how to use our tool. They would do go to events uh, and communities to talk more about how developers can do things differently and give them instruction. So the brand purpose guiding many things from the product, what we offer to the customer, from the kind of content we put out there to the kind of people that we hire. Mm. Yeah, I love it when you uh, when you care about uh, every single detail from the big things to the small thing. So <laughs> I think, I guess that, that's all about the branding, right? So I actually think that's a small thing uh, can make or break the whole experience. So let's say that you 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 really like one product, but uh, due, uh, along your journey, um, your experience with that product, you have some kind of uh, problem, it can really like ruin your whole experience. It comes also to the point of the brand values, what the companies want to to promote and to to follow, and this kind of values would guide the behaviors of everybody within the company. At Ivan, for example, our brand values are uh, ownership, openness, and encourage, and we actually do truly live by these values in everything we do. Uh, one way that the company can uh, enforce this and promote it is every quarter we actually vote for our value champion. So we oh, really? put it 
<laughs> we both have, would be the one who represent the ownership. What if they do this quarter to show that they own something? And who would be the value champion for openness? And who would be the value champion for courage? So that is something that we do every quarter yeah. to really by the values. Yeah, I love this uh, initiative. Yeah, so uh, we received a, a few questions from the audience. So let's try to to answer this question in the in the next couple of minutes. So the first question. Uh, how 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 much of the marketing budget should be uh, uh, distributed to branding? Right. Um, I'm going to give a very boring answer to this one because as many other things, it depends. It depends a lot on the company strategy. It also depends a lot on the maturity of the brand. And it also depends a lot on the competition. How much are they spending on, on branding? If they're spending a lot, of course, you have to spend a lot if you want to stand out. So the short answer is it depends. Um, I do want to share some number coming back to the Gartner study that I mentioned in the beginning that the investments, the CMOs are making, according to that research, they are spending 9.7% of their marketing budget per year on brand strategy. So it's one guiding number for the marketers to, to, to decide, but it's very much depending on the, the brand. For example, whether you are a totally new brand, nobody knows about you, then you have to spend more effort to, to, to brand yourself to make people know about you. But when you are an iconic brand, let's say Apple, Apple actually doesn't really do branding anymore because they already have the brand. Now, Apple advertising is actually very boring. It's very much yeah. about, hey, we have a new phone and here are the features. Yeah. Because they have done that branding before and they're an iconic brand. So they don't have to spend that much in branding anymore. So that's why the marketing budget, how it's spent on branding depends a lot on, on the maturity of the brand, the, the market that you are in, and the strategy, what you would like to go. Mm, yeah, very good answer. And... Uh, what are the KPIs that we can use to evaluate the effectiveness of branding? A oh, very good question. Mm, yeah, I think it's a really good question. And it comes back to the step number five when I was talking about how do you carry out a brand marketing plan. So when it comes to measuring the success of brand marketing, there are four elements that, that, that the marketers really should look at. So the first one is brand awareness, how many people have heard about you, which is a quantitative way to measure things. The second thing that you would want to know is the brand engagement. Basically, how many people are connecting with you, how many people are having some sort of interaction with you online or offline. So again, it's a quantitative metric. Then the third one is the, the brand affinity. Basically, it means that how many people like you, uh, how many people feel like they, they, connect, they can connect to you at some level and you are representing them at some level. Because people knowing you doesn't mean that people like you. So that's why we want to know actually of all these people who know about your brand, how many of them actually like you. Because if they mm -hmm. like you, there's a bigger chance that they're going to buy from you. And the last uh, element of the brand that you want to measure is the brand sentiment, which is more on the qualitative side of things. It's about what kind of things that people are talking about your brand, what kind of words are they choosing, um, and what kind of feeling are they expressing when they talk about their brand. In case Coca-Cola, for example, Coca-Cola wants to send out the message of being happy and happiness, but then do the audience actually talk about happy when they think about Coca-Cola? But if they talk about sadness, it means that the brand has doing a bad job at, at communicating the happiness to the customers. So that's why it's important to measure these three, four elements. And I can just spend a lot of time to talk about how do we measure each of these, but I think it's a good start for the yeah. matter, these four elements. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we still have a couple of questions. Yeah, but I guess we are running out of time. So let's go to my last question for you. Uh, do you have any advice for junior marketers? If I have what? to choose one advice, yeah, I one think advice. advice I uh, mentioned earlier that if you get the chance to work for a marketing agency for a couple of years, because that is where you can learn so much and so fast from different brands, different industries, how to work with people, how to use your time in the most efficient way. Excellent advice. All right, we have covered a lot about uh, the topic branding and brand marketing today. And uh, 
once again thank you so much queen for you know, spending your time with me today and for sharing so so many valuable insights with the audience today i am 100 percent that our audience will love this episode thank you so much daniel and thanks again for for having me i'm very happy to to be able to share this experience with the marketers and if people have any questions for me feel free to contact me via linkedin daniel feel free to share my linkedin uh, profile with the audience so that they can ask more questions if they want to yeah thank Once you again, thank you queen